Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing the Meepo V2 electric skateboard. Now this is my second electric skateboard. I owned a Blitzart Tornado 2 before that, and I'll be able to give you somewhat of a comparison and contrast between the pros and cons of the two boards, as well as why I like this board a lot better than my previous one. Now before I get any further in the video, I want to mention that I am not sponsored or endorsed by Meepo. This video and this skateboard are not paid for by any Meepo or any of their affiliates. I'm purely doing this as a product review from my own experience and my own work uh, with this board, which I purchased with my own money. So let's get started. The Meepo V2 really is a skateboard that punches above its class in terms of price. It retails for just over $400, and yet it packs a lot of the same capabilities that something like a boosted board Stealth, which would retail for well over $1,000, can also provide. This skateboard is driven by two 400 watt electric hub motors, BLDC motors driven by an ESC, and that ESC is then powered by a separately mounted, uh, in this version, 4,000 milliamp hour 10S battery pack. Now this is actually the entry level battery pack. The one in the version uh, that you can buy on Meepo's website actually can go up to 6,000 milliamp hours if you're willing to pay a little extra. That being said, in a future video, I'm going to be building a new battery pack for this skateboard, theoretically with a 7,200 milliamp hour nominal capacity using Samsung 36Q cells. But that's a topic for another video. Now in terms of operating time, the battery life is decent. You usually can get around 10 miles on an economy mode ride or on a high performance or as I call it ludicrous mode ride which is the highest power setting on the skateboard you can expect between four and six miles of operating range. Now although this isn't the greatest battery life you have to remember that this is a seriously high performance board. It's outputting 800 watts at the ground from this battery pack and of course it would make sense that the voltage sag there is going to be noticeable and thus it will run down sooner when it's under such heavy load. That being said, it is more than adequate for a daily rider, especially if you're on campus uh, going to college, or if you're just riding within, you know, a few blocks of different locations, and you're just going back and forth without needing to really go for any extended range rides. The skateboard controller is a really quite ergonomical trigger uh, fit handheld controller unit with a thumb screw for adjusting the throttle position and braking. Additionally, it has a reverse button and a power on off button. Now the power on off button also doubles as a uh, profile selection button. You can start off at the lowest profile, which is called beginner mode, which provides a limited maximum speed and very gradual acceleration profile for first learning to ride the board or when you're in very dense traffic or pedestrian traffic at a crosswalk, for example, where you might not want to accelerate too aggressively. The next level up is economy mode. It also has a capped speed, however it allows a slightly higher acceleration rate and optimizes battery life by giving you the, re the right balance between power and rideability alongside not consuming the battery too quickly. The next level up is called expert mode. An expert mode is a very aggressive high, uh, high speed acceleration profile with a maximum top speed of 25 miles per hour, which is the top speed that the board is capable of. And lastly, we have pro mode, or as I like to call it in honor of Tesla, ludicrous mode. In ludicrous mode, the skateboard accelerates with all the power the motor has, and although it is still limited at 25 miles per hour, it gets from a dead stop to 25 in just over 10 seconds. Very impressive, very fast, and uh, it is quite a bit of a fun time to hold on when you're riding. So that's what the uh, controller looks like, and those are the different functions that the controller offers in terms of its uh, overall selection. Let's have a look at some of the acceleration profiles. I'll start it off on its lowest mode, which is a con or a beginner mode, and I'm going to then accelerate it, basically hit the full throttle, and I'll show you what happens. That's as fast as it goes. It's pretty uh, low power, pretty low speed. Let's bring it up to economy mode. A Little bit faster. Still took its time getting there, though. You see the braking is pretty aggressive, even on economy mode. Let's go up to expert mode. Aggressive braking, it gets up to high speed in a reasonable amount of time. And let's now go on ludicrous mode. You see it gets there in just about no time at all. Now in the real world on the road, it does take a lot longer to reach these speeds just because it takes more power from the motors to actually accelerate it when it's under load. But you get the idea of the differences between the different uh, modes that you can set this skateboard to operate. One feature that I like about this skateboard is you don't have to push the power button to switch it on. All you need to do is put your foot on it and push the board to get it to start. You can see it's now operational. 
In terms of rider comfort, this really is a luxury skateboard. You can see if I jump on the middle that there's quite a bit of deck flex here. And in fact, that actually is really beneficial because it absorbs vibration and other shock from the road very effectively. It also makes sure that the skateboard's internal electronic components are not overstressed by uh, like rigid coupling of the vibration of the road into the internal components. This is one of the principal reasons why this has been such a reliable board, especially when compared to the Blitzart Tornado 2, which had a much more rigid deck and thus transmitted vibration uh, much more readily into the electronics as well as into the rider, making the ride less comfortable. I also really like the style of the skateboard. The black on gray color scheme with the subtle orange and green is really nice. It's not too ostentatious, and the board itself doesn't look excessively like an electric skateboard. It almost looks like a standard, uh, regular traditional skateboard, and that's actually quite beneficial if you're trying to ride stealthily and not uh, draw too much attention to the fact that you're riding an electric board. Now I also want to mention that the handle that's cut into the board is a really nice feature. Now even though the board only weighs about 15 pounds, it really is not too challenging to carry, the handle makes it all the more easy to carry around, and in fact makes it extremely convenient to just uh, carry around with you, even if you don't want to ride it at a particular time. Another question you might have is, is the skateboard waterproof? Now unfortunately this skateboard is not waterproof, and it actually says as much in the manual when you buy it. It's not really a big problem if you're in a dry area like Arizona, but in, a, in places where it's very rainy, you may want to make sure that uh, the places you're riding don't have a lot of puddles, otherwise you could cause damage to the board. Now I can tell you from experience, and in fact I'm going to talk quite a bit about this in terms of the uh, reason why I'm upgrading the battery, uh, that this board will survive being ridden in fairly damp conditions, even through like half inch deep puddles that are spraying water everywhere. The ESC, as you can see here, although it has a vent on it, is actually quite well sealed, and getting water in the ESC is not a huge concern. What's not well sealed, first and foremost, are the hub motors. These motors got lots of water in them, and the next day they were significantly noisier and more, uh, not nearly as smooth as they used to be, because the bearings had corroded as a result of moisture intrusion. Now they are replaceable, and if the bearing noise gets to be excessive, I will replace them, but that will definitely not stop you from riding, it's just something that does incur permanent damage to the skateboard if it's ridden in the rain. Now the more serious problem occurs with the battery pack, which is also not uh, insulated against water. If water penetrates this battery pack, it actually fills up this lower section of this housing like a bathtub if it's sitting up, uh, right side up. And I actually had that happen without realizing it. This thing was about an inch deep in water after being ridden pretty hard in the rain. And uh, I didn't have any issues with it reliability wise until about five days later when it wouldn't charge anymore. Now I'll show you on the inside what happened to the battery and why that was the case in a moment. So here's what I mean about the waterproofing issue. You can see here there has obviously been a very large amount of moisture penetration. It looks like it's gotten quite deep, and I don't know what this gray powder is, but I'm pretty sure this might be the oxidized casing of the 18650 cells that's dissolved out into the water and deposited itself on the inside of the battery case. When I opened this up initially, the symptoms that I had were that this battery charge connection had completely eroded away. I replaced the connector with an XT60 pair, so I actually installed this part and made it work again, and in fact it has still totally worked since then. That being said though, I definitely don't trust this system. I think it's uh, if the cells themselves have actually worn out uh, or have actually gotten completely dissolved into the solution, that's really quite hazardous and I don't want to continue writing it like that. So, for that reason, even though the battery still seems to function fully, and also because I wanted to do an upgrade on the battery pack capacity, I'm going to be building a brand new battery for this skateboard in a future video, which will be released on my channel shortly thereafter, after this one. Now, I want to reiterate that this, none of this issue has anything to do with Meepo's poor quality of build. This is ex entirely due to me taking the skateboard out in the rain against better caution in the manual. So Meepo still did a phenomenal job of building this board, and this should not be uh, taken as any indication of poor quality overall. In fact, like I said, the fact that it still works, and apart from this minor charge cable issue, it remained fully functional 
even after complete immersion, is truly an indicative of a very high quality battery build and a very high quality skateboard build overall. So not exactly waterproof, but still good enough to keep it running for days after the exposure and after minor modifications, the battery seems to be still fully functional. Here's another look at the battery pack now that I've removed it. You can see on the other side the label is pretty well damaged by water. You can see the turn red when wet sticker here is quite red, it's definitely been wet. And even when I took this pack out of the skateboard when I first had to repair the battery charge connector, it was actually dripping water. This is five days after I went through the rain in the skateboard. It was Water was dripping out around the cable leads. The whole thing was moist. It was a bad situation overall. So I just disassembled the battery pack. This is actually for another video I'm doing on building a new pack. And it turns out that gray powder had nothing to do with the battery. In fact, it's pretty much completely dry inside here. They wrapped this in several layers of plastic and fish paper, and it really kept the moisture out well. I don't see any signs of corrosion or really anything wrong with this battery pack at all. Now, not only would I say that it was so well insulated from water that that protected it, and I would say Meepo did a phenomenal job at that, but I have got to say, this is one of the most well-built battery packs that I have ever seen. Uh, all the cells are individually cased with these separator uh, plastic grills. You can actually see a little groove between all the cells, which means they're very resistant to vibration. They're not going to rub against each other in short. Additionally, you can see they're using an uh, actively controlled BMS. It's got a chip on it. It's not just a bunch of like passive op amps or anything like that. It really is an actively controlled BMS. It's got the balance leads and just the overall pack construction is truly beautiful. You can see they've gone with these four by or the two by two uh, tab welded pack connectors on each end. They've got a PCB separating the inside board to make sure that there's no shorting between adjacent cells. It really is, in my opinion, as someone who's built a lot of battery packs and taken apart a lot of battery packs, one of the best I've ever seen. So, Meepo, you have really done it. You've made a skateboard that is not only inexpensive and high performance, but you've made one with a safe, rugged battery pack that stays dry even when it's immersed in water. That is absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead and take it out for a ride. This board has certainly proven itself to be very capable, high performance, competing with boards over twice its cost, in some cases even three times its cost. But that being said, is it a reliable skateboard? Now I've owned this skateboard for about six months and I've been riding it every day just about. With pretty rugged riding, I've been going over lots of bumps and cracks and uh, going off curbs and going at high speed up hills and doing all kinds of stuff that's uh, pretty rough on skateboards. And uh, my experience would lead me to believe that yes, this is a very rugged, very reliable skateboard. Another reason there's really not too much to worry about with reliability of this skateboard is that every single component is available on Meepo's website, Modular. You can buy individual parts if anything on the skateboard breaks down. Now what that means is you not only don't have to worry about not being able to find repair parts or having the board become a brick if something goes wrong with it, but it also means you can ride pretty aggressively and not be too concerned about having to uh, spend a whole lot of money on a brand new skateboard if you do happen to break something. And if anyone at Meepo is watching, this is board number 1331, so whoever put number 1331 together, good job because it's been a really great board for me so far. So there it is, the Meepo V2. 
a high performance 25 mile per hour electric skateboard that's reliable, that performs well even under rough service conditions, and that has all of its parts modular and ready to replace from their online store if anything should break down on the board. I highly recommend this board for anyone looking for a skateboard that's fun, reliable, and fast, and that you don't need to spend an arm and a leg to purchase. If you have any more questions about the Meepo V2, post them below in the comments and I'll see if I can address them in a future follow-up video. Obviously I haven't done a completely comprehensive test of all the capabilities of the board, for example hill climbing performance, or other trick performance, or other uh, general purpose uh, modifications that I'm planning on making. So thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something about this skateboard, and I will see you next time.